Welcome uh, to National Council of Urban Indian Health's um, Forum on Electronic Case Reporting, or ECR, as we like to say for short, um, focusing on the implementation, so the results, successes, and challenges. Uh, my name is Tiffany Stark. I'm one of the public health program managers here at NACUI, and I'll be your host today. Um, and we would, again, like to thank you for taking the time to meet with us. Next slide. Um, so if you do have any IT difficulty during the call today, um, please chat directly to comms and events, and Amy can further assist you. Um, also, if you could, please enter in your name, UIO, or external organization, and any tribal affiliations into the chat box. That way we can get to know each other and also count your attendance. And we would also like to uh, review some uh, quick housekeeping items. Uh, so if you do have video capability, please enable the camera. We love to have a more interactive environment. Also note that the microphones are currently muted, but you will have an opportunity during the open discussion portion uh, to have uh, your questions answered. And you could also raise your hand at the bottom too if you would like to be called on or just unmute if there's silence. Um, and our chat box will be monitored throughout the presentation. So uh, please feel free to drop any questions or comments and we will address those at the designated time. And I'm sure that you have already seen the notice pop up, uh, but we just wanted to note that this session will be recorded for educational and quality improvement purposes. And we also have our evaluation link and QR code. Um, and Michael will drop in the link in the chat. Uh, this will definitely help us to better support you in the future, especially as it relates to electronic case reporting um, and any questions that you may have. And we have the acknowledgement for the project. Uh, so this content was funded in part by a cooperative agreement with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And for any new folks that are joining us today, uh, the National Council of Urban Indian Health, or NACUI as we say for short, is the national nonprofit organization devoted to the support and development of quality, accessible, and culturally competent health and public health services for American Indians and Alaska Natives living in urban areas. And taking a look at our agenda for today, uh, so we will have an overview of the ECR implementation program, um, and then we will also have two testimonies from two UIOs, uh, Bakersfield American Indian Health Project and Fresno American Indian Health Project, followed by an open discussion, and then we will close with some um, upcoming reminders. Uh, so at this point, I would like to introduce our first speaker. Uh, so we have Sarah Sabonia uh, from the CDC. Uh, she has joined the CDC electronic case reporting team in May 2020 as a presidential management fellow. She currently serves as the healthcare onboarding coordinator and health equity coordinator and has worked with tribes and tribal organizations in this capacity since 2021. And before joining CDC, Sarah worked at the USCIS Refugee and Asylum Office. Sarah received a doctorate in medical anthropology from Washington University in St. Louis. Uh, so at this time, I'd like to pass the presentation over to Sarah. Um, and please uh, welcome Sarah by putting your favorite emoji in the chat box. Thanks, Tiffany. Um, and thank you all for um, coming. I'm really happy to be here and to have been part of this um, really exciting program for the last couple of years. So um, I'm going to just start by giving an overview of um, what ECR is, um, and then I'll be around at the end um, for any questions. So next slide, please. OK. So a um, little background, timely and complete patient data is critical for public health surveillance and response during routine and emergency times. Um, we learned this 
you know, during COVID, um, but it's it was true before COVID and it's true after COVID as well. There's many conditions that it's important that public health departments um, know about and, and are able to understand um, which populations are particularly affected so that they can, you know, put their resources um, in the right places and helping the people that really need that help. So, um, reporting of conditions of public health significance is required in all U.S. states and also in all territories. Um, traditionally, that reporting has been done what we call manual reporting, so either making a phone call to the public health department or sending a fax or sometimes logging into a web portal and putting in your reports there for, for COVID or other reportable conditions. Um, but something that interrupts the, the workflow and requires manual action um, on the part of the healthcare provider. So right now there's 208 conditions that can be reported electronically using ECR. Um, so instead of having the healthcare provider um, send that fax or make that phone call, um, the report can be generated automatically and sent to the public health department. Um, there's 208 conditions available. These include all sorts of different conditions from infectious diseases, some chronic conditions, some non-infectious dis infectious diseases, and most recently we added um, birth defects that are able to be reported this way. So next slide, please. So electronic case reporting is the automated real-time exchange of case report information between electronic health records and the public health agencies. Next slide. So this is the um, the layperson's how this works. You may have seen this in some of our social media, um, but the kind of um, overview of how ECR works or electronic case reporting. So the patient comes in to see the healthcare provider um, and they're diagnosed with some sort of reportable condition. Um, could be COVID-19, could be syphilis, could be cancer. And the healthcare provider just enters that into the patient record, into the electronic health record software, just like usual. They don't need to do anything special um, to make this an, a case report. But something that's in that entry um, triggers this case report to be generated. It could be that diagnosis, as in this example. It could be a certain lab test order or a lab test result. Um, we're working on getting certain medications to be triggers, um, all sorts of things. So something triggers this case report, and this case report is um, generated and it's sent to this intermediary platform, and then it's compared to the criteria that public health department have for a reportable case. So, you know, if you're in Wisconsin and Wisconsin has said for us, a reportable case is a case with a positive lab test um, and you have a diagnosis, but no positive lab test for that condition, then it won't go to Wisconsin. Um, but if it meets the criteria for the state where the patient is in or where the provider is in, then it's sent on um, to that public health agency and they can get that report in real time, just in, in minutes. Um, then the public health agency can start working on contact tracing. Um, they can start public health action. They can be aware of an outbreak if they're getting a lot of reports, you know, with a seafood restaurant and they want to know, um, you know, what's going on at this restaurant all of a sudden. Um, and then the provider also gets a, a what's called a reportability response back. Um, and so the healthcare provider will get a, a note in the patient's chart the electronic chart that will say something like this patient was found to have a case that's reportable to this public health agency and it was reported and the public health agency can send information back and say, you know, for more resources about um, this particular outbreak or this condition, go to this website. So it's a complete kind of um, feedback loop like that. All right, next slide, please. Okay, this is the um, diagram for the informaticians in the group. Um, this is the kind of the more technical version of the architecture that I just went through on the previous slide. So everything that's in this light blue box is already set up. That all exists. Um, the part that you would be adding is that provider piece on the far left. Um, your electronic health record software would be generating a case report, either using our free ECR Now Fire app or something that your EHR vendor has developed by themselves. Um, there's two different options. Um, 
And then you can see it goes to that intermediary AIMS platform where it's compared with the criteria that public health agencies have submitted, and then it can be routed to one or more public health agencies. Um, I think one thing important for this audience, right now all 50 states are receiving case reports. Um, the District of Columbia, two territories, um, and starting, I think today, we've got one tribe that's connected to this infrastructure as well. So um, it's, and we're trying, we're working with more tribes and their tribal public health departments to get connected. So it's possible that if a tribal member goes and gets care, you know, in the city um, where their urban Indian organization clinic is, and is diagnosed with a reportable condition, that report can go back to their tribe. And so when they go back home, or even while they're still in the city, you know, their tribal public health department can be reaching out um, with resources for them. It is, we've been working on this project with the tribes kind of simultaneously with the UIOs. So we're really excited to have gotten to this point. Um, okay, next slide, please. So some of the benefits of ECR. Um, you know, the big benefit for healthcare providers is that it saves time. Instead of having to interrupt patient care and make that phone call or send that fax, it just happens automatically. Um, it can streamline jurisdictional reporting challenges. So especially if you live um, near a state line and there's different reporting rules for different states, or if your patient lives in one state, and you're in a different state, um, you don't have to kind of keep track of all the rules. That's all done automatically. Um, third benefit is receiving that information back from the public health department. Um, the public health departments are just starting to, to kind of use this um, and understand how it works, but you know, it's great that they can actually provide information. They can update this within an hour. So if there's an outbreak going on, they can give you almost that real-time information and say, you know, we're noticing a lot of cases on college campuses right now. Um, please make sure you test any college students for this condition um, and get that communication going. Um, fulfills the legal reporting requirements, um, can be implemented for all reportable conditions. In the beginning, we were doing this just for COVID because everything was just for COVID. Um, but now again, we have all of those other conditions available. And then if any providers are part of the CMS Promoting Interoperability Program, um, ECR is one of the requirements for that as well now. Okay, so next slide. Um, so we had one organization, OCHIN, I'm not sure um, if you're familiar with, but they did a yeah, preliminary study on how much it costs for them to send all their reports. So this was a nine-month period, I think in 2021, where they just did this initial um, study, and they said it takes about 10 minutes for us to report a case to public health. Um, we reported almost 15,000 reports during this nine months, so that would be you know, this many hours. And if we assume that the person is paid $30 an hour, then it costs us, you know, more than $4 million. Um, so, you know, I mean, they're a really large organization, right? You're talking almost a thousand different facilities, um, but still it's a significant burden. Um, for electronic case reporting implementation, we found that it takes about a hundred hours. It's gonna be a little different depending on which EHR you use. Some EHRs are gonna set it up for you and then it won't take really any time at all. Fingers crossed, that's what they tell us. Um, others take more time. And then of course, if you're a pilot or an initial implementer for a new EHR, which a lot of UIOs are, um, then it's gonna take more time because they're kind of working out the bugs as they go. But on average, 100 hours at $65 an hour for an IT specialist, that's 6,500 um, versus more than 4 million. So for OCHIN, it saved them a lot of, of time and then a lot of money. Um, next slide. And just a little bit about kind of the infrastructure and how we've grown. Um, when we were talking with some of the tribes about this, I think they were really surprised to find out that this ECR is such a new program. Um, right. In January of 2020, this was a tiny little pilot project. There were three different locations. Um, there was the Institute for Family Health, which is a, a chain of federally qualified health centers or a collection of federally qualified health centers in New York City, and then an organization in Houston and one um, in Utah. And that was it. 
And then COVID hit and it was suddenly like, how can public health get this data um, quickly without adding to the burden on healthcare providers who, you know, were on, you all know, right? You know, had, had enough on your plates besides having to, to make these phone calls and send these reports. So we started onboarding really, really quickly. I think this is actually up over 29,000 different facilities now. And when we say facility, that's anything from a solo provider, you know, one doctor in one office to a large teaching hospital. We've actually got almost 30 or maybe over 30% of hospitals are now using ECR. So we've been busy. Um, next slide. Okay, oh good, here's our numbers. These might be a little bit out of date, um, I guess as of September 22nd. So um, you know, hospitals, these are the facilities. Um, we've been working particularly trying to get critical access hospitals using ECR um, and federally qualified health centers. The reason we've got so many more hospitals than ambulatory providers is you've probably all guessed, is the, the electronic health record, um, yeah. You know, hospitals all tend to use Epic or Cerner, right? That's two thirds of the market right there. Um, whereas the ambulatory market is, is much more fragmented. So we're working with almost all of the um, EHR vendors, but it's much, it's, it's much more slow and they don't always have the resources that an Epic or a Cerner has, but we are seeing more and more of them um, move into general availability. And we've seen a real acceleration in our um, ambulatory facilities. So next slide. Uh, so in addition to this project here with Nakui, we have a couple projects with the National Indian Health Board. Um, I talked about the tribe connecting to receive um, ECR data. That would be the Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa Indians in North Dakota. So they're the ones that, fingers crossed, it was supposed to get processed today and then they can start receiving um, ECR data. And Salt River Pima in um, the Phoenix area is not far behind. Um, they're just waiting on some, some policy things, but we're expecting them to be um, receiving data as well within the next couple months. So, um, you know, and any tribe, you know, tribes have inherent public health authority, any tribe that wants to um, join us and sign up and start receiving data on their and tribal members or people living on their tribal lands, you know, we're we're here for that too. Um, they can just reach out. So ideally, this would be kind of a loop so that the urban Indian organizations can send the data and your tribe then can receive the data. Um, I think that's I think that's it. Was there one more slide? It was my thank you slide. Yes. Um, okay. So that's it. I'm looking forward to hearing about the experiences of um, the next two presenters. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so yes, at this point, I would like to introduce our next speaker. Uh, so we have Diana Ortiz um, from Bakersfield American Indian Health Project. Diana has been working for Bakersfield for just under three years and is the clinical applications coordinator. Um, she has an associate's degree in medical assisting, as well as health information technology. Um, after many years as a medical assistant, she went back to get uh, the HIT education and steps um, for IT solutions. Um, when uh, Bakersfield really needed that, she manages the electronic health record system and the users that manage care plans and is responsible for the MediMedi -Medi enrollment process. Um, so I would like to pass the presentation over to Diana and put in a um, favorite emoji, your second favorite, uh, to welcome uh, Miss Diana. Good morning, everybody. That was a wonderful introduction, Tiffany. Thank you. We uh, we've we've been through a lot of ups and downs through this process. We were um, invited by Nakui to apply for a grant to facilitate this uh, program for the ECR. And so I had to contact our vendor, which is Greenway Energy. And they're like, oh, sure, we can build that for you. Um, it's gonna cost 
roughly about $45,000. We can have it done by the end of December, 2022. I'm like, okay, let's, let's get this process started. Well, <laughs> it ended up being a lot bigger build than, than what I had anticipated. We have a lot of interfaces that go out to IHS, that go out to, to different organizations. And I thought, okay, well, it's just going to be as simple as that. No, it wasn't. So Greenway Energy is using um, smart on fire technology for the first time with this build. Um, they they knew about the technology. They were working with the technology to get us um, in compliancy for the 21st Century Cures Act that is has to be completed by the end of this year, um, the end of December this year. And so, but they had not actually built a platform using this technology. So they've been working with the CDC and the health department. And we are really close to being able to start the testing process and go live. Um, the challenges here have been not only the pushback of completion dates, but we've had a lack of communication as Tiffany and Micah well know, um, they weren't keeping us updated on progresses or delays. So in order for me to have information to take back to the Nakui team, I would have to reach out to them and say, look, where are you at? You know, where are we at with this? And then they would, of course, share the information. But at that point, it's kind of frustrating because I'm like, please keep me, you know, up to date um, with the process so that I, I'm not having to scramble to get information to take back to our meetings. So it has been, there's been some frustration. There's definitely been challenges. Um, I'm looking forward to the end result. I'm looking forward to that light at the end of the tunnel where this program is in place. I think it is much needed. I think it's going to save a lot of time considering I'm the one that would be responsible for doing all of that reporting. And I'm only one person and I do a lot of reporting. Um, so I'm looking forward to, to just seeing this through, getting it completed, and being able to say, yes, we, we made it through. It's been almost two years in, in the process, right, Tiffany, that we've been, and thank God for Nakui to award us the funds to pay for this. And, and I'm just looking forward to, to, to our completion. And that's going to be our success. We don't have it yet, but we will soon. I'm I'm told. And we here at NADC very much appreciate you being the leader with Greenway because then we can point to you as an example of what needs to happen. Because we have we've hit a couple of brick walls. <laughs> Uh, do you have Greenway as well? We do. Yeah, now I was told that there are several um, that have joined on. And and my, my, my issue with them, I've always told them, we paid you a lot of money up front to get this built and to get it built within a timely fashion. I says, and, and I know that you're going to be able to then sell this to other organizations and UIOs. And, you know, I says, number one, we better be the first to get 
piloted off the ground on this. And I said, you know, and they keep saying, yeah, yeah, we know, we know. Yes, yes. You know, but, um, but it, it, it's definitely been, a, been a challenge. And I'm, I'm like, I know that we could have went a, a, a simpler route until this big build was done. And then we could have been onboarded with the, the new technology at that point in time. But I do believe it could have been done just as an interface to start. Yeah. And I, um, I, I haven't heard any final decision on if they're going to try to charge us or not. Um, I'm not the primary person. I'm I, I'm filling in for our operations manager over at the clinic, but okay. um, I'm I'm glad. The last time I talked with Tiffany, she said, "I know there's one other UIO that's using Greenway, and you know, they've been having some challenges as well. So it's really good to hear from you about how you're navigating those challenges." Okay, well, feel free, Sue, to contact me. We are the pilot. Um, program or you know we're the pilot organization for this for this technology through greenway yeah so um so yes let's let's keep in contact i'll let you know how the testing phase goes and okay. and um how we how we move forward through that thank you so much Awesome discussion. Um, I think we had the PowerPoint slide um, paused a bit. Sorry about that. Um, if we <laughs> can advance to the next slide. There we go. Um, and I'll pass it back to Diana. Sorry about that, Diana. No, it's fine. Um, I, I should have said next slide. Um, we can we can go we can go to the next slide. Um, this that was this is all just about the fire on technology that you know technology it's actually smart on fire and it will bring us into the cures act for 2024 um like i said i i just wish that we could have already had this up and going before this this big build and i did ask too if we're if they're already bringing us into compliance with the cures act isn't that the same reporting because the cures act is a national wide um, patient info sharing so and i was told no that it was going to be um a separate entity can you can you verify that, Sarah? Um, is this for the certification of the EHR product or for the um, promoting interoperability program? Do you know? The, the interoperability um, program, so the, the whole Cures Act in itself mandates that everybody be on board um, with the patient info sharing to reduce over usage or drug, you know, drug seekers, what, whatever. So I asked if to eliminate the big expense and the weight for this actual ECR program, um, isn't it the same as the Cures Act? And I was told no, that it was gonna be a separate reporting um, platform which kind of didn't make sense to me because complete nationwide patient info sharing is info sharing. So I think it would be different, Diane, because um, there's um, HIEs, which is like your health information exchanges, which has to do with not just exchanging with public health, for instance, but being able to exchange with other health centers and being able to exchange with the hospitals and being able to retrieve those hospital records for your patients. So I think when you're thinking of that, it's more than just 
public health in itself. I got you. Thank you. Okay, next slide. So this is what um, Greenway shared with me for, for the smart on fire technology, how it's going to impact the practice. Um, I guess it's a lot more reliable and um, I, I don't know, it's kind of frustrating, but I'm glad that they have this technology and that they're, they're willing to use it to facilitate our need for this reporting. Next slide. So <laughs> here again, you know, we were given a go live date originally of December 31st, um, then the spring and then June. And so I'm really hoping to have this live and this um, workflow happening by the end of this year. Right, Tiffany? Next slide. And here again, this is just the, the, the workflow of how this technology in the ECR um, program will work. Next slide. Next slide. And I think that should be it for me, no? Yes, I think it paused out again. Sorry, her time out, I should say. Um, thank you, Diana. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, at this point, I will um, now introduce our final speaker for the presentation. Um, so I will like to introduce Bertha Ramirez. We can go to the next slide for Bertha. Looks like it's lagging out. <laughs> Technology, it's great when it works. There we go. Um, so um, I would like to introduce Bertha Ramirez um, from Fresno American Indian Health Project. Um, she is the Director of Operations um, and was born and raised in the Central Valley, um, born to farm working families, um, and she understands the need for quality health care and services. Um, she has served in various leadership roles for nonprofit health care organizations for over 25 years, um, with 30 years working in health care field. Um, so at this point, I'd like to um, pass the presentation over to Bertha, um, and maybe this time put your favorite um, dessert or snack emoji in the chat, um, and welcome, Bertha. Good morning. Well, good morning for the West Coast, I would say. Probably good afternoon for anybody else that is here. <laughs> So yes, um, I was born and raised in the Central Valley. I've been here. Um, I have been in healthcare since 1989. Please don't tell me my age. Um, so I've been around for a, quite a bit of time, just in healthcare, various roles. So I'm really familiar with um, HIT. I've migrated various different um different programs or practice managements. I mean, we started, I think when I first started, we had these humongous IBM type computers that used to sit on your computer on your desk and it used to take up about half of your computer. Um, so that's how long ago and we used to have like these paper, um, when we used to make appointments and you'd have to flip through the papers and write everybody's names on there. And then somebody would call you and say, oh, I need to cancel my appointment. You were like, oh no, I gotta find the name. And you gotta flip through all these pages and try to find that person's name. If somebody had sloppy handwriting, Lord have mercy. So I've been in healthcare for quite a bit uh, of time. I've seen it move from the point where it's like, call me on my phone. And if you find me, great. If you don't, oh, well, to the point where now they track me anywhere I'm at. They just call me on my cell phone and now they find me. So it's a 
huge difference from one period of time to another. And the technology has, technology has just been evolving over the years. And so when this whole ECR came out, I for me, it's exciting. Something brand new, um, something where I don't have to write a piece of paper and notify public health of this particular disease where I just want to be brainless and just do what we normally do. And it just goes out. Just like I just want to walk into a doctor's office, be scanned and be told what my disease is. That's what I want to in the future, kind of when I move in. Um, all right, let's go to the next slide. But my slides are probably not as extravagant <laughs> as Diane's. They're a little simpler. Um, so this is FAIHP's purpose. So we promote cultural wellness we want to enhance quality. Quality is very important to us, um, to all the lives of our tribal nations and communities. We are an urban Indian organization. So we see a multitude of different individuals from various tribes from all over the United States. Um, our vision is to embrace and empower people from all nations and communities. We provide culturally based health and wellness services, supporting the mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual needs of our community. So we do provide a lot of community services. And so part of it is, of course, quality. This past Sunday, we did a 5K run. So we had lots of folks out there. We had about 200 runners. And so that was part of um, all of the physical and emotional and spiritual needs that we kind of wanted to do for our community this past weekend. Next slide. Um, so we have NextGen Practice Management System. Um, that's a health records that we have. Luckily, it does have a lot of features, so I didn't have to struggle as much as I think Diana has had to with Greenway. Um, so we do have the capability of various different programs. So we have mobile applications, there's dictation capability. We have the NDW, which is how we transfer all of our GIPRA and workloads and all of that information to IHS. There's a UDS function. The next gen share is how we utilize the ECR program. And then we also have some additional add-ons of Freesia, and eye to eye, which eye to eye is more like a population management program. And Freesia really assists us in getting pre registration of folks into our system. We can also have them make their payments through there. They can request appointments through there. So it's a kind of a combination of things that Freesia kind of does for, for us also. Through the next gen share, like I mentioned, that's what actually gives us that electronically shared record or the ECR. And so in in itself, it has the capability of identifying that, oh, it's a COVID test or it's a COVID diagnosis. So therefore it's going to be a reportable and it goes out automatically. And that's where I really like the fact that I don't have to think, it's just gonna do it based on how it's set up in the background. Um, so it just sends out. Next slide. Um, the process, it did seem to me a little long. Um, I think when we got the next gen system, we purchased it in 2019. Um, and I was already pretty familiar with next gen in itself. I had used it previously at the previous organization I had worked with. So I did have to set up the entire system from, you know, making sure we put in pricing and CPT codes and the reschedule codes. So we had to set up the whole system and I actually pretty much did, I'd say 99.9% .9 of everything in our system. So I was very familiar on how it worked, what it can do, its capabilities. Um, so when we got it in 2019, I started setting it up at the beginning, probably at the beginning of that year. And um, I knew of the AIMS program that was capable of doing ECR. And I really wanted to do everything. And it was probably too much. 
Um, so in July of 2020, I had requested to try to get into Ames to try to start sending ECR. Of course, that's what COVID hit. Everything was going on. Um, and they were like, no, we only have a couple you know, pilots. We're not going that far. We're not doing that. So I had no luck at that time. Um, I think it wasn't until February. And then I kept asking. It was like every six months, I think I was bugging them. I was probably one of those little pesty people that just kept bugging, bugging, bugging. I want it. I want it. Um, so finally, by February 2022 is when um, I kept asking, I want to be a pilot. Can I be a pilot? I want to do this. And then finally, we got this grant with Nakui. Thank, thank you, Tiffany. You were great help. Um, and that was June of 2022. So I think with Nakui being there, I think they, they really helped us push even next gen just to allow me just to get in there because I had been bugging and bugging forever. They just weren't letting me in. Um, but once Nakui helped, I was finally in and um, we were able to actually get everything rolling um, and getting everything coordinated. Thank you, Tiffany, with CDC and the department public health and just connecting the dots, you know, and being able to get it really rolling. Next slide. Um, so next gen share, that's what L is what we use for the transmittal. Um, we did add a patch to our software, of course. And then of course we also want to do an upgrade because there's so much new features that are available within the upgrade. It's just going to enhance the products that we already have. So I think a very important piece um, is just working with the vendor, just having that good communication, consistent communication. And believe me, I am a pest when it comes to communication. I mean, I just, I like keep bugging and bugging and bugging. Um, I'll, I keep putting tickets in if I have to. And I think now they finally figured that I'm like a little pest maybe um, to the point where they assign me a person who meets with me every month. <laughs> so I have, I love that because I have someone that I can speak to every single month. I have a standing meeting with her. Um, and so they really are helping improve every little section that I need improvement um, within the next gen system. So I think it's it's a good thing. So I just keep asking for help. We put in tickets, I reach out. Um, the training as far as the providers, um, they do get the messages kind of, um, I think Sarah mentioned how it does send back a reportable response back to the system. So it does send that reportable response and it'll give them the information. It drops into what we call a PAQ or provider approval queue. So it goes directly into like their individual buckets, because that's where like all of their records drop into, whether it's an electronic record or whether it's something coming from ECR or anything that we scan, everything drops into their, it's kind of like their inbox. So it's a provider approval queue that they have to review and then do approval or follow up on tasks. Um, so I think the other thing is just reaching out to everyone if something isn't working. So if something isn't dropping in or something isn't showing, it's just reaching out and just communicating with them. Next slide. Um, this is kind of um, where we see our reporting. Um, it doesn't have patient information. Um, I didn't show a picture of our, EC, of our ECR PAQ because that does have information. And this just shows some of the reports that kind of have gone out to um, through that electronic share pro program. So next, next slide. Um, so key findings, um, of course we did do a patch. We are gonna do hopefully an upgrade. Um, the patch did create some problems, but I think we pretty much got most of them fixed. A couple of little minor issues. Um, our ECR is still considered in testing mode, which 
it's always in production. So it's kind of what they call a soft go live on their end. Um, they don't have like a test environment where it gets tested. It's just production and they're just kind of reviewing it regularly. And um, I'm hoping that we can hopefully send those 208 other diseases, hopefully in the future. I think that would be really nice and just be able to send everything electronically. So I think that for us, that's our next step is being able to send everything through ECR. Next slide. And takeaways, I don't know, for me, it was persistence, communication, just following through, checking to see if results are going, dropping into my PAQ, checking that report, um, just continuously checking status, and then continue to improve your technology that you may have, because there's always something better, I think, in improvements. Next slide. And that's it for me questions. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Bertha. Yeah, with that, we will transition over to the open discussion portion uh, where you can ask any of the presenters uh, questions on their presentations or anything that you may have thought of following their presentations. So the floor is open. I have a question, Bertha, uh, Bertha and Diana. Uh, when you guys were talking to the vendors and you guys were first bringing up ECR, did, did you floor them with that mention or they already knew and they were trying to implement or going to or was in the works? Um, I know for when I was looking at, are you talking about like at first when you're first looking at a vendor to determine whether you want to go with that vendor or are you thinking... You already have a relationship with your vendor and you're bringing it up that you want this connection, this interface. So, and yeah. So for us in NextGen, um, they already had a pilot going on um, and I was just trying to get in on that pilot. That's what I was trying to do. So I already knew that they were had a pilot going on connecting through Ames. And so I was just trying to get in. Um, but I think they already had like the folks that they wanted in their pilot. I think it was until we got the grant when the CUI that they kind of allowed me to join in. Yeah, as for us, I had to approach them and ask them um, if this tech, you know, if this was possible. And then we had to have meetings with them and Nakui to, and, you know, they said, yeah, for this price, we can build this for you. Sure we can. It wasn't already pre-built or anything. Um, this is brand new for them as well as for us. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and to uh, further that, Sarah, could you provide um, some of the top preferred EHR vendors um, that are more equipped right off the bat to help with this process? Yeah, um, I've got a link we can put in the chat. Um, thanks, Mira. Um, so this link will show you the vendors that are currently in what we call general availability, which means we're, you know, we've gone through all the testing and everything and they are ready. And, you know, we just start onboarding um, organizations using those pro those products right away. Although with a lot of them, we're doing sort of a, a phase rollout because we can't onboard like 10,000 all at once. So we're kind of going, you know, state by state or something. Um, and then most other products we're also working with. So we are working with eClinical Works. Um, they're working with their pilot sites right now. They're, we're hoping to have them in that general availability bucket by the end of this year. Um, Next Gen also, I think as Bertha said, yes, it's been very long soft go live, but hoping to get them across that finish line as well. Um, Athena Health, um, Athena Clinical's product is in general availability now. Um, 
Greenway is, is still developing their product. Um, we'll see what are some of the other ones. There's, um, I guess it's Veradime now. I don't know if anyone uses the, um, it's all, is it all Terra or all scripts now, but the Veradime product um, is close to being in general availability. I think those are the ones we're working with. Um, we did meet with the RPMS team um, with IHS and, you know, I'm sure you all know that they're working on a replacement for that. But in the meantime, um, as fire becomes required, um, they're looking at adding ECR capabilities into RPMS. It would be sort of a modified like an ECR light because their fire API isn't robust enough to do everything. Um, but fingers crossed, we'll have something in a year or so going with them. Um, so right now it's the commercial products that are are going faster. But if you have specific questions, you can always email that um, ecr at cdc.gov and we can give you more information. Thanks, Sarah. Um, and yes, I saw a question that I know Sarah touched on. Um, from Crystal about other um, sites with eClinical Works. Um, and we have one currently and then um, one that will be onboarded very shortly. So two uh, eClinical Works in addition to the next gen in Greenway. Yep. And, and we are at the point now where is, if a UIO reaches us and is reaches out to us and is interested in being one of those initial pilot implementers, then we just put them at the top of the list um, for the next, um, I think it probably that's from you, Bertha. We were like, okay, can't tell these people no. Um, so yeah. That's awesome. Thanks, Sarah. Any other questions? If not, that's okay. Um, we could move forward with the presentation and we'll check back um, through the chat or if you wanna pop off uh, mute, if you think of something as we continue on, that's fine. Uh, so next slide. Uh, so we do wanna make mention of our upcoming NACUI events. Um, so on October 26th, we have the Integrated Healthcare Through an ind Indigenous Approach, excuse me, uh, November 1st, we have Culturally Inclusive Healthcare, Honoring Traditions for a Healthier Tomorrow. And then on November 9th, we have um, our second uh, Paths to Vaccine Equity, uh, focusing on annual vaccinations. Um, and we also have the link for you um, as well to take a look at those events. Next slide. Uh, so we do have some funding opportunities. Um, we have uh, one additional award available for ECR, uh, up to 85,000 for the implementation. Um, we have the link for you in the chat as well. Um, so take a look at that. Um, definitely um, very helpful um, after hearing the presentation today. Uh, we also have 2024 Special Diabetes uh, Program for Indians 2.0. Um, and also STARS Indigenous Safe Housing Center Program. And that link um, for those opportunities can be found in the chat. Next slide. Um, and then we do have our contact information here if you have any questions, um, as, you know, as it relates to ECR, uh, we're happy to help. Um, and we also have our QR code and the link um, for the survey. That will definitely be helpful for us to know how to better support you in the future. And again, I want to thank everyone for spending some time with us today. Um, and thank you to our presenters, Bertha, Diana, and Sarah. Um, great presentations and super helpful. Um, so thank you again. Um, and I hope everybody has a good rest of your day. And we'll hang on a little bit too in case there's other questions.